from a day where so much hope was put out for HBCU football. So much hope was put out to see schools actually stand up, make that next leap. We are once again depressed. Hey y'all, Coach Simmons here. And we're gonna go ahead and look at the roundup for the day. The HBCU football roundup. We're gonna see just what could have been, what should have been. Well, I'm looking at, man, I'm looking at these schools, games that were close, that were on the verge of being a win for HBCU football. The games that were on the verge of being called a step forward. Now, th- this 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 game, this this day, we had. We'll start off with, with Morgan State. Morgan State. I, I did a video. I told people watch out for Morgan State. Morgan State was on the verge of pulling off a win against an FBS opponent. I had said before, we should play the MAC. The MAC conference is a FCS conference in FBS land. They had Akron down. If it wasn't for a Brian McCoy scoop and score with under a minute left. Morgan State would have went to Akron, Ohio and had the upset of the year. Now, don't get me wrong. I think Morgan State is a great school. Morgan State is about a year away. Or if you want to say it correctly, a quarterback away. I think once Carson Baker or even Dominique Anthony get more settled and they get one or two receivers on the outside, Morgan State will be a problem. Not just a problem with the MEAC, but a problem with all FCS. I had such high hopes for that game. That game was on the, had me on the edge of my seat like no other game today. Then we go down to Baton Rouge, Grambling was down twenty-one, I believe, to ten. Had the ball at the goal line. Missed a wide field goal. Still was in the game. The skill positions and Crawley was doing good. Until the the better of their common sense got a hold of them. 15-yard unsportsmanlike penalty. Just kind of woke up LSU. And then we saw the final score of that. The game, I believe, was just been final. Was uh, FAMU versus USF in the American. FAMU has the inside track on getting to the Celebration Bowl because they beat Jackson State. And no other team in the in the East looks like they're going to be competitive. Well, fam was close, but still, play calling and a lack 
of, I believe, confidence in Musa did them in. Now, we can go ahead and talk about Bethune Cookman getting the dub. We can talk about Alabama State losing to Miles College. <laughs> but I think in the East, because they have that one game advantage, and there's no one else in the East that really is going to give them any kind of a challenge this year. And I'm going to say that. I mean, we see Alabama AM. and m As long as Willie doesn't Willie and choke up against Bethune Cookman at the end of the year, FAMU should be in the driver's seat. But, man, if they could have pulled out against USF, that black national championship would have been more impressive. Now, when we go to Alcorn State University, 0-2, two ugly losses, one to USM and one to Stephen F. Austin, has kind of exposed Alcorn. Last year, their D-line was one of their strengths. Their, their, their sack-leading D-line. This year, it looks like with the loss of their defensive coordinator, they're no longer going to be that threat that we thought they were going to be. Now, they still have time. And honestly, they don't really have any losses in conference. And with the West looking the way it looks, with PV getting gapped, 71 points being put on Texas Southern. I don't know why Andrew Body wasn't playing, but Alcorn still has a shot in the West. A and T. Now I was told not to talk about A and T because I have a conflict of interest with them. But North Carolina A and T, man. I was hoping, beyond hope, that it'll be a closer game than what they showed against, I believe it was Central. 30 to 16, and the game was not that close. ANT only really scored in the second quarter. But after halftime, it was just a slugfest. And they show that they don't really have any depth. They don't have any strength up, 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 up close. In a quarterback situation, 51 yards passing will not get it done. I don't care what kind of offense you're running, 51 yards passing is going to be a fluke. Now, when it comes down to Texas Southern University, I'm sorry, Tennessee State University. Tennessee State, the way they looked was beyond, let's say flukish. Uh, yeah, we know they played um, Pine Bluff, and we know they beat Pine Bluff. 24 to 14 versus Pine Bluff is not an impressive win. That's the kind of win, that's the kind of score that should be a halftime score. Now, it's showing Pine Bluff will have a fight in them. They won't quit. But if Tennessee State really wants to get in the playoffs, really wants to win their conference, they got to get the quarterback play situated. And leaves the last two. Southern University. I don't know what it is about Dooley being the quote-unquote quarterback whisperer, but it seems every quarterback he has sucks. At least in the last three years of me watching HBCU football. Juwan Pass was good at a deep pass, but that's all he had. 
blood, either he's not being allowed to, doesn't have the receivers, but the offense looks extremely pedestrian. Extremely pedestrian. The last two games with Alabama State, which lost to Miles, and now with Jackson, you are literally averaging 14 points a game. Well, I'm sorry. You had 24 versus Jackson State. No. Southern University. Yeah, 14. 14 points is not going to get it done if you want to win a conference game. Averaging 14 points a game, you might as well not even show up. I mean, honestly, why are you even here? Today, of course, 27 to 14 lost Jackson State which was not a good game by Jackson State. It was just a horrible game by Southern. It was literally a horrible game by Southern University. If Jackson State plays this way next week against Texas uh, State, it may be the 71 to three that Toledo put on Texas Southern. But the thing I, I gotta let you know, Jackson State has the talent. They really do have the talent. But it's something that's wrong, something that's missing. It's like they don't have the fire. Now I do know, look, I'm not gonna be the one to say it. True, I will say it. Whoever the hell made their schedule needs to understand you're putting these kids at risk. But having them go to Miami first, I'm sorry, Atlanta first, then Miami, then Baton Rouge, then San Marcos, you need a home game. You need time to rest and relax. You can't be road warriors every year. Jackson State has to learn to schedule a home game in September before they go on the road for these quote unquote money games. Now, I'm still picking them to beat Texas State next week. But they need to get some rest. Like, tomorrow, don't do anything. Just get medical treatment, recuperate. And TC, you have to sit down with your quarterback and come up with a couple of plays to test that secondary for Texas State. Because honestly, that secondary, as UTSA proved today, can be beaten deep. You have to play a zone with two men over the top. You do have great safeties. You have good corners. Your front seven is the strength of your defense. But you have got to settle down against Texas State. This is not a business trip. This is not one of those, I'm coming to get a paycheck and leaving. This is a game where you can set the standard. And yes, you are still chasing FAMU for the Celebration Bowl, hoping that Valley, Bethune, Bama State, or A&M beat them. But you control your destiny. If Jackson State wins out, I said it before and I'll say it again, they will host a freaking playoff game. And that's on word. It's Coach Simmons. This has been the HBCU Roundup. Y'all have a wonderful night. God bless.